Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Google Sheets integration in AppSmith and by doing this, we'll look at flows that allow you to read data from Google Sheet and we'll also consider flows that allow you to write data in Google Sheet. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this is the application we are going to be building out. Right now it's empty and we'll build this out by making use of the Google Sheet integration. Going to the other tab, this is the Google Sheet I have prepared. It is a Google Sheet on book review data and this Google Sheet contains two sheets. So the entire spreadsheet contains two sheets. The first sheet is the books sheet, which is the one you are currently seeing. And we also have a user sheet, which is the next sheet. So let's go back to the book sheet. All right. So this is a quick overview of everything we have right now. And then I think we can get started. So the first thing we need to do here is to create a data source that integrates with our Google Sheet. So head over to the data source section, click on the plus button. Uh, let's go to create new and select the Google Sheet option we have right here. So this is Google Sheet. Let's give this a name. So I'm going to call this books. All right. We also need to specify a scope for this sheet. So in situations where you want to build an app that um, only reads data, you might leave the scope as read only, but because we want to read and write data to the Google Sheet, we are going to set this to read and write. So setting that to read and write, then I'm going to go ahead to click on the authorize button and we should have a pop-up here to confirm that. So select my Google account and allow this. All right, and now we have the Google Sheet authorized. We can go in to create a new API and the first API resource we would be creating would be one that allows us to read data from the Google Sheet. So let's use this API resource to read books from the Google Sheet. So let's call this get books, All right? And for the method, this is going to be fetch sheet rows. We also need to specify a spreadsheet URL so I can quickly grab that from here. Right, is this here? And we need to specify a sheet name. So remember that in our spreadsheet, we have two sheets. We have the books sheet and we have the user sheet. So make sure that you specify a sheet name that you want to read from here. We want to read from the books sheet. So I'm just going to call this books. And for now, everything looks fine. So we can go on to test this. Uh, just to mention that right now we have a row limit which is set to 10. So we would only expect a maximum number of 10 records to come in from the Google Sheets uh, um, sheet we have set up. So let's click on the run button and we can see some data coming in. You see that we have just 10 records coming in. All right, so this looks good. Let us go on to display this data in the application. For that, we're going to use a table widget and I can easily bind that table widget by clicking on the suggested table widgets right here. All right, and this looks good. So you can see that we have been taken to the canvas and we have a table widget on the canvas with the data automatically connected to this table widget. So this is the data coming from the get books query and this is it showing up in the table widget. So let us go in to expand this table a bit so that it looks nice. All right, and for the table headers, I'm just going to turn off the search filter, the filters and the download option so that we have a clean looking table widget. And here we have the table widget on the canvas. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to configure pagination using the Google Sheets integration for the table widget. Because right now we can only see a maximum number of 10 records, which is not representative of all the data we have coming in from Google Sheets. Uh, because going back to the Google Sheets, you see that we have lots of records. We have uh, 43,340 records, but right now we can only see 10. So it means that we need to enable or configure pagination for this table. So in order to do that, we need to head back to the Get Books query and edit this a bit. Uh, the first thing we need to edit is the row offset. Uh, before we go on to the row offset, I just want to mention that it is necessary to specify a table header row index. And this is going to be the index where you have the table 
heads. So for me, this is in the first index. That is where I have the ISBN, the book title, the book author, the year of publication, publisher, and image URL. So make sure you have that specified. For me, it is the first row, and that is why we have uh, the row index set to one right here. So I'm just going to head back and scroll down. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to set the or configure the row offset. Right now, this is hard coded to zero. But what we want to do is to calculate the row offset based on the current page size and the current page number. And to do this, we can easily write some JavaScript right here. So this is going to be table one, which is the table widget we have on the canvas dot page number minus one. And we want to multiply this by the page size. So this is going to be table one dot page size. All right. And you can see that the evaluated value is still set to zero. That is because we are dynamically calculating this and we end up with a row offset of zero. Uh, we similarly want to set the row limit and we can make this dynamic. Right now it was set to 10, which is a static value. We can set this dynamically to be whatever the page size is. So this is going to be table one dot page size and we have 10 train up so the reason why setting the row limit to a dynamic value is important is because if i go back to the page and say for example i reduce this to a smaller number uh, heading back here so let's go to the get books query we should have the row limit reduced to something like around five so you can see that it has been reduced to six uh, that's the benefit of setting a dynamic row limit so that if you go in to change the page size or the table size, you would not need to worry about going back to update your query. All right. So let's go on to use that configuration in the table widget. So I'm just going to go to the table widgets. And the first thing we want to do is to enable server side pagination. So I'm just going to turn this on. We also need to specify a total record count. And this is going to be for me. 44340, which is the last item I have here. So let's type this in. So this is 44340. And the reason why this is important is because it is going to disable the next button when we reach a maximum of this count. So it's automatically going to disable the next button so that users do not click keep clicking on the next button whereas there's no more records to show. I'm hard coding this for now, but you may want to run a separate query to get this count in your use case. All right, so we have that configured. The next thing we want to configure here is the on-page change event. So go to the action section and let's look for the on-page change, which is the event that um, we have right here. So when this event occurs, what we want to do is to go to execute the get books query again. And we already have that set up for pagination, so everything should work out fine. All right, so let's test this out. I'm just going to click on the next page button. And you can see that we had a refresh and then we had data displayed and we can click on that button again and you can see that we have new data coming in so so let's go back to the first page and we have all the data coming from the first page showing up so we've been able to go through the flow that allows us to read data from the spreadsheet now let's go through the flow that allows us to write data to the spreadsheet and for that we would need a form widget so let's just head in and grab a form widget. All right, we have a form widget right here. So I'm just going to place this here and let's expand this to take up the entire space. That looks good. We have some buttons here. I'm just going to bring them to the bottom. So bring this also to the bottom and that looks nice. So for the form, we want to be able to edit the title and the author of the book. For that, we need two input widgets. So let's bring in the first input, place it right here, and I'm going to expand this. And we would need another input for the author. So let's expand this. All right, and that looks good. So we have two inputs. We have input two, and we also have input one. So let's go in to configure this input. For the first input, we want to be able to edit the title. So for the label field, we can just call this title. All right, and for the default text, we can pull this from the item selected on the table. So this is going to be table one, which is the table we have dot selected row dot book title. 
And here you see the book title of the item selected on the table showing up. So similarly, let's go into configure input two. So for this, we can set the label to um, author. All right. And for the default text, we can pull this from the table similarly. So this is going to be table one. Dot selected row dot book author. And we have the book author showing up on the table. Now we are able to click on a new item on the table and have that um, reflected on the form. And that is a good step. The next thing we need to do is to configure a query that actually lets us write data that has been entered into this input to the spreadsheet. So for that, let's head to the data source. We have the books data source right here. I'm going to click on the new API button and we can go into configure this. So let's call this update book. All right. And for the method, as you already guessed, this is going to be update sheet row. All right. So we need to specify the spreadsheet URL. I'm just going to grab that from here one more time. All right. So I'm going to paste this here. We need to specify a sheet name. So let's go into um, specify the sheet name. This is going to be books. And we also want to go in to set the row objects that will be the updates. Uh, we still have the table heading row index to be one. So this is going to be the row that has the table heading, which in my use case is the first row. So let's leave that to one, which is the default value. Next, we need to go and configure the row object. So this is going to be an object, all right? And we can write an object right here. All right, now we have an object there. It is compulsory for this object to have the row index. That is how we get to figure out which row you are trying to update. And with that, you can add in the updates that would go along with the query. So the first thing we need to do here is to specify the row index. And we can easily grab this from the item that was selected on the table. So this is going to be row index. And we can grab this from table one dot selected row dot row index. And that looks good. Then we want to go into update the book title. So this is going to be book underscore title. And we can pull in the new value from input one dot text. And similarly, we want to go into update the book author. So this is going to be book author. And this is going to be coming from input two dot text. All right. So we have this looking good and uh, taking a look at the evaluated value pane right here, you can see that we have uh, everything looking nice. So we can go in to link the update query we just um, configured to the submit button we have right here. So let's go in to um, link that. So I'm just going to click on the gear icon at the submit button and we want to go to the actions where it says on click. Whenever this is clicked on, what we want to do is to execute the update book query. And when that is successful, we want to call the get books query so that the entire app is refreshed. So let's go in to test this out. I'm going to select the um, fourth item we have on the table. And here where it says John, I'm going to update this and edit it to Mary. All right, so we have Mary right there. I'm going to click on the submit button and hopefully that should get updated. So you can see that after clicking on the update button, we had the update query run. And when that was completed, we had the page refresh by calling the get books query. So let's go in to check uh, this item. You can see that we have Mary showing up right here. And we can also confirm this by going to the Google Sheets um, page and taking a look at the item here, you see that we have Mary showing up right here. So we've been able to successfully update the sheets using the update query. So in this video, you've been able to see how to use the Google Sheets integration. We've seen how to read data from Google Sheets and display that data in the table widget. We've also seen how to configure pagination in the query as well as in the table widget using the Google Sheets integration. And lastly, we've seen how to write data to Google Sheets. All right. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please let us know. If you had any questions, do not hesitate to ask in the comment section. We will definitely answer all your questions. So please do ask any questions that you may have. This will be all for today's video. I'm going to see you in my next video. Take care. 
Bye-bye.